Staley on a pitch. Play, but that was a second and long, and you, you think that was a good play call. Good defense, though, by Colorado State. Gain of one, third and 14. Staley in the backfield with Doman, who again has a ton of time. And he's got a man. Caught by Mahe. At the 12, he's got the first down. 18 yards on the pickup. And long, and you, you think that was a good play call. Good defense, though, by Colorado State. Gain of one, third and 14. Staley in the backfield with Doman, who again has a ton of time. And he's got a man. Caught by Mahe. At the 12, he's got the first down. 18 yards on the pickup. Colorado State is saying we're going to drop into zone. They bring a blitz, but they only have four rushing. So BYU is able to pick up the blitz. No one gets to the quarterback. Here you see Mahe. He will be open. Quarterback finds him, zips it on the run. And that zone is good against a lot of people. But I'm not sure against this offense and against this quarterback that it's going to work. At some point, you're going to have to lock up in some man. Pitch to Staley. He's going to throw it, and it, it's picked off. Flags go down, and we'll have to wait. Jason Gallimore with the interception. Flags hit, and there's a, a Brigham Young Cougar who's down as well. When Need is down and the penalty flag looked to be where it, it was a question of whether the safety came over the top. I know it wasn't offensive pass interference. Man, but you ought to be able to go for the football, shouldn't you, Rich? Well, we'll take another look at it. Gerald Wright will render the decision. There's two fouls on the play. We have an ineligible downfield offense. We have pass interference, defense, both offset, replay, first down. Hmm. All right, let's take a look at at least the end of this play. Staley pulls up, lobs, and I guess that's right. The, the, the push on need was, that's what forced him to the ground and allowed the interception. And they'll do it again. You know, it looked like he injured his arm before the ball was thrown in, 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 in making the contact and then fell over as a result. I think that was a break for BYU. More flags are down. Lots of flags here tonight. And a slow start, even though Brigham Young has driven almost length to the field. Defense, offside, five-yard penalty, still first down. Here's a look at Spencer Ned again. Watch the contact. There's the contact. Yeah, the ball was in the air. It's a good call. But there you, go, you can see there's the injury right there. He's holding that left elbow, dude. Couldn't tell where it happened. Yeah, good call by the officials. Brigham Young is inside the 10 now. They can get a first down at the two. Dolman keeps it, and he's in. Touchdown, Brigham Young. What an offense. As good as advertised. Mm. Coaches sit upstairs and they chart what the offense is doing, the different sets, the different plays. All you saw was different sets and different plays. The only thing similar, they all worked. Matt Payne adds the point. Brandon Dolman marches the Cougars into the end zone, and Brigham Young is on the board first. The number 18 dairy farmers.
Ah, the power of cheese. And by the joy of Pepsi. Full moon over Provo. Brandon Dellman marches his team 67 yards and gets him in the end zone. There's another former Brigham Young quarterback. Robbie Bosco is the quarterback coach. Last three games, 129 points. Seven on the board already. Pete Rebstock, five yards deep. Rebstock brings it out. And he winds his way out to the 21 yard line. Offensively, Colorado State struggled early in the season. They've clicked lately because of the play of Bradley Van Pelt. Van Pelt completing 47% of his passes. His weapons are many. And the guy in the far right, Pete Rebstock, is a guy that they just haven't been able to get him the ball at all. That's why he ran it out of the, the end zone. <laughs> Juan Ruff, the running back for Colorado State. Offensive line is a veteran line, and you've got a couple of pairs, the Pair Brothers, at tackle and guard. Yeah, well, Eric, this guy they think has a ton of upside. He's a red shirt freshman, defensive line. It's a 4-3 look for Brigham Young. I really like 92, Ryan Denny. Denny, seven sacks on the year. He's the leader up front. Second down, Redstock in motion. Ruff. And Ruff has a big hole out to the 38 yard line. Once again, number one, Dwayne Ruff, the ball carrier. Gets the ball out to the 38 yard line of Colorado State. Ruff can run. He doesn't have the size, he has the speed, and Colorado State coming in showed a lot of video of San Diego State rushing. And they did a great job with Larry Ned. And I think it excited them about what they could do to this BYU defense. 17 yard pickup. Van Pelt, first throw. Got away with one. And it's caught out at midfield and brought down by Henri Childs, the running back. 13 yards for Childs. Here are the linebackers for Brigham Young. They are rather large, especially Enna at 261. <laughs> Walking horse there, 47, almost had the interception. You called it. You said they got away with one in the flat there. Secondary for Brigham Young. Gennaro Guilliford is their best cover man. He's just a sophomore. NFL potential. Yeah, that was a, a scary throw for the folks upstairs for Colorado State. But a completion nonetheless for the BYU 48. This is rough. Colorado State coaches told us they felt they could run the ball, especially inside against Brigham Young. And if that doesn't work, Van Pelt may be running the football because he's had a 100-yard game as well this year. Well, he can run the football. He has the size. And he also has the running ability, and, and I finally figured it out yesterday. I saw where he's an all-star high school soccer player, and he runs with the footwork of a soccer player. Second down, Van Pelt swings it out. Caught at the 40. And a first down. Joel Dreesen the catch. Nine yards on the pickup. What is it about Van Pelt that has, has progressed in these last few weeks? Well, he forced the ball when he first started playing. And I think you often do that as a, a new quarterback. You put the whole weight of the offense on your shoulders. And it's like any sport. When you have that ball in your hands, you have to let the game come to you. Here's our first option look. And there's Van Pelt with the footwork you talked about to the 26-yard line. Let's check in with Heather Cox. It's Scott Jackson, the backup center, has a sprained right knee. Now, don't forget the starting center, Jason Sukanik, playing with a torn meniscus in his knee. Now, if they have to go to a third center, it would be guard Aaron McCubbins that would move over. Bad news for no line that only allowed nine sacks all year long. Especially an offense that uses a lot of shotgun. Yeah, good point. 
Good point and good pick up by Heather down there. That uh, you don't want to go to your third center really any time, but certainly not in the gun. On first and ten. Van Pelt going deep, and it's picked off. Gennaro Guilford. He didn't get away with that one. No, you could say Guilford got away with one, though, because that ball should have been a touchdown. The corner was beaten. There was a void area there that the ball could have been thrown more on the line. Didn't happen, and ball back to BYU. 7-0, Cougars. The season for Van Pelt, and number eight, Brigham Young has the ball back at their own 20. This play had a chance of working. Van Pelt, a great motion there. And he has an area, if he gets a little less air under this, stop it right there. Here's Guilford, but his receiver on the outside would have taken a good throw, but there was a little open area there. You're being kind. There was more than a little open area. Yeah. Doman to the 25-yard line. Eric Pauley made the stop. It is just fun to watch a quarterback who can do it all, who is a leader, who is smart enough to understand this complex offense, who can throw it, who can scramble and throw it, and who can run option. I mean, he runs an option the way Turner Gill used to run. Now, and now don't get me wrong, he's not Turner Gill, but he's smart. But, I mean, he's, he's Robbie Bosco, Mark Wilson, Steve Young, and all that in the pocket and when he's moving around. He's also about out of time. <laughs> I think he's going to get it off, though. Sukanik is back at center. He's smart. For Brigham Young. Doman. Flags are down. And Doman is going to scramble. Hook slide out to the 44, but the flag is back at the 28 yard line. 18 yards on the pickup. Legal substitution, offense, five-yard penalty, repeat, second down. And let's go to the studios quickly, Reese Davis. Reese? All right, Rich, Brandon Dome is not the only quarterback that can run. George Godsey down 14-13 in North Carolina just follows his fullback. He's no Dean Blevins with the speed, but he gets in there. Tech on top of North Carolina, 20-14. to No, he's not, and that's to his credit, Reese. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think what happened here is that there was a late substitution, and you know that they have those substitution rules so that the defense is not at a disadvantage. That wasn't one where the defense was at a disadvantage, but the penalty goes to BYU anyway. You can't substitute once you've broken the huddle, and that's what Brigham Young did. On second down, Doman, little pump fake, gonna go deep down the sideline for Peterson and almost made the catch. Rather, Justin Anderson, the wide receiver. Good defense. Good defense. Coverage by Justin Gallimore. That's Jason's brother. Uh, Justin Gallimore is as good a defensive player as there is in this conference in terms of being in the right place at the right time. There's a good example of it. A good throw. Still almost had a chance to be a completion, but at a Wheat Ridge, Colorado. You had Jason Gallimore blitzing. He put the pressure on Dolman, and Justin had the coverage on Justin Anderson. Third and ten. Doman over the middle, complete 32 yard line. Doug Jolly, the tight end. Last game I was standing in this press box was against Air Force. Doug Jolly had a mammoth afternoon. And in that game, he had 10 receptions, 177 yards, had his shoulder pads off late in the game and was signing autographs. <laughs> Gary Croton making notes. Smart route, though, because he was sitting in a zone 11 yards deep, and it was third and 10. Staley on a pitch. And Luke Staley across the 40. Every time he touches the football, it's about 9 or 10 yards. It's almost automatic. 
Aaron Sprague made the stop. Staley doesn't run any faster than he has to run. He really locks on to the blockers in front of them. Look at the numbers there. This this number right here is just phenomenal. What was the number you looked up today, the record? 9.6. Yeah. Chuck Witherspoon yeah. of Houston. Houston. And, I mean, that's within reach. I mean, if Staley has a couple big games, he could get from 9.1 up to 9.6. Little dump off. Spencer Need. Need to the 30. Need to the 20. Out of bounds at the 13. They're going to mark it back at the 37. Need thought he had a big gain, but it's about to get reduced. Let's watch. Fake toss. It's sort of like a boot out to the tight end. Good block. Is that a word downfield? Whoa. Keep it. He's in need of staying in bounds. You never need to go out there, do you, unless you have to? Well, I'm not sure. Even Spencer. Oh, you mean back deeper. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you look where they marked it, back at the 37. It was hard to see if the foot actually went out of bounds. So he went out of bounds before being tackled? You got it, baby. I don't, I don't think so. Uh, that's I, I don't think so. Well, you go down and tell Gerald Wright. The yeah. <laughs> Dolman throws it high and incomplete. Let's check in with Reese. Reese Davis. Remember three Thursday nights ago, Joe Burns had a terrible game against Maryland. Couple of fumbles, an ill-advised run out of bounds. It cost him some time. Well, Joe is making amends. Up 20 to 14 against North Carolina. This is not the greatest effort you'll ever see from the Tar Heel defense. Burns carrying guys into the end zone. It's now 26-14, about halfway through the fourth. Thanks, Reese. Speaking of running out of bounds, let's see if Spencer Need really went out. Whoa! Is that the spot? I think so. Well, I'd like to. Uh, uh, I mean, that, not a good enough shot. I mean, guys down the truck are splendid. Maybe the best I've ever seen, but uh, it's hard to see on that shot. Doman on the option, and Doman's inside the 30. Lost the football, and it's scooped up. That's Sam Halliday to the six-yard line. I have never seen anything like the BU statistics. Option, lead option. This was quarterback all the way. That ball pops out. Just a poor job of securing the football, but Halliday has it. And again, listen to this number, folks. They've now fumbled 26 times, and they've recovered 20 of them. They've only lost six fumbles. First and goal from the six. Dolman. Hit it to two. It was Jason Gallimore. Dolman right back on his feet. 6'1, 195 is Dolman. You know, he cuts it up inside a little sooner than I thought. And when you do, you get pops from linebackers and safeties. And that's where you get hurt. How about the red zone numbers for Brigham Young? Unbelievable. Just, just unbelievable. 43 of 46. Yeah. Uh, a lot of that is scheming, a lot of that is uh, knowing what plays to run, and then it's also having a great offensive line. Look at this motion. Doman going to throw the quick screen. And it's caught into the end zone. Touchdown, Luke Staley. Wow. Wow. The formation seemed to be endless in Gary Croton's offense. Yeah, you know, you think you have everything defended, and Colorado State thought they did coming into the game, but I've never even seen that. Have you? It was almost the, the old swinging gate. It's a Sunday afternoon game. Brigham Young calls it the bubble screen. Luke Staley from Brandon Doman. And Brigham Young is off to a quick start, 14-0. Young, in Gary Croton's world, this is an everyday formation. Let's watch where the quarterback throws it from. What yardage? 
Stop it right there. Here's the quarterback. This ball goes back here. Is it a pass or is it a lateral? It is a lateral, therefore that should be a touchdown a run by Luke Staley. How do you defend that? Well, you, you move your men over. They did not move defensively. They did not adjust, and they hadn't seen it. The thing you do is you call a timeout. Dexter Wynn for Colorado State. In front of over 60,000 here, BYU is up to a 14-0 lead. Prime time on ESPN. On Saturday, Ohio State and Minnesota. Can Glenn Mason beat his alma mater again? It's the Gophers and the Buckeyes, college football, 745 Eastern. Saturday on ESPN. For more on this weekend's college football action, log on to ESPN.com. Second possession for Colorado State. Rough on the draw to the 18. It's the tortoise versus the hare here with BYU's offense so high powered. Colorado State's offense isn't bad, but it, it I mean, it's a long drive, grind it out kind of offense. Yeah, uh, there, look at the numbers there. I mean, it's three to one, and Colorado State is exactly where it did not want to be, and you never want to fall behind. But to a team like this, this team can run it up real quickly, and I mean get the lead out where it's really hard to come back. Now you're backed up into deep into your end zone. Rough on second and seven. You know how offenses are like this, though, Rich. When they when they get you down, they just continue to hammer and hammer and hammer. And if they start having, if they start playing with a short field with a big lead like that, it gets out of control. This game got out of control last year. In fact, it was Colorado State that raced to a huge lead. And Brigham Young accused Colorado State of running the score. Uh, well, I don't understand that. They didn't score any points after getting ahead 45 nothing. 45 21 was the final. Hey, Doman had his coming out party, didn't he? Yes, he did. That was the good news for BYU. There's Van Pelt. And Bradley Van Pelt wills himself out to the 39 yard line. Bradley Van Pelt. Good choice of words because he did that against Fresno earlier to almost pull up the upset against David Carr and company. He's not your prototypical quarterback, is he? No, he's really not. He's, he's, he's uh, still learning the position. He skateboards into class, into practice. And if he can run like that, they don't care how he gets there. He was an option quarterback in high school. Of course, his father, the NFL linebacker. They put him at linebacker at Michigan State. He wanted to play quarterback, transferred to Colorado State. Goes deep, and he just misses Rebstock. Pair of fours on that play. Good ones. Guilford and Rebstock. You know, they've got to find a way to get Rebstock the ball. I was told the story earlier about Mike Marks was at practice for Colorado State, and he was talking to Sonny Lubick about several things, and then as he started to leave, Lubick was asking him, you know, how he would go about things. He said, hey, all I know is that I'd find a way to get the ball to number four. Rebstock, 20 catches, three touchdowns coming in. 21 yards per catch. That's why they want to get him the ball. Van Pelt on the draw. And Van Pelt's across midfield. Van Pelt to the 30. He's 20. Flags go down. Van Pelt is dragged down. This one's going to come back. Partially 56 yards on the run. The flags are back of the 25. Well, and it'll be a call against Davis. Dallas Davis was in a predicament and he wanted to help his quarterback and he didn't help him. But uh, it's hard to hard to pull away in those situations, but it'll bring it back. But it'll still be a big game. It's a point of foul penalty. So they'll mark it from the 25. Good runner, isn't he? He is. You, you can see how, he, how effective he must have been running that option in high school. This should end up about a 37-yard gain. Legal block in the back. 10-yard penalty on the offense. Repeat, second down. 
Davis is number 27. He'll come into your screen from screen left, I believe, right here. Right there. You know what? You've got to pull yourself off of that. I mean, you've got to be disciplined. Here's going to be another look at it. Van Pelt's trying to sneak back out. And, you know, it's kind of a ticky-tack call. But you can't afford to even be in that situation where an official can make that call. It is first and ten at the Brigham Young 35. Pittman in motion. Rough with the carry. Flags are down, and the whistles blow this play dead. Ochoa in motion, too. That was an illegal motion for him. Five-yard penalty, still first down. 6-3, 217 is Van Pelt. Timer, correct the time. He's a lot like his head coach, Sonny Lubick. And I think and that's I think that's why Lubick likes him. Just tough. Oh, tough. Yeah, yeah. A yeah. gamer. That's right. I mean, his performance that you saw against Fresno State was yeah was really incredible. That the, the comeback by Fresno State really overshadowed one of the guttier performances this year by Van Pelt. Well, it, it helped him understand that he could be good and his team could be good. You know, Sonny Lubick told us last night. Adding some time back to the clock and St. Lubick telling us last night at some point in the season he said, you know, I didn't know if we we're going to win over two games. <laughs> well, as they add the time, Lubick added that the reason Colorado State has improved dramatically in the last four games is because of Van Pelt. Yeah. The better he gets, the better the team gets. They haven't won them all, but they could have. First and 15, Van Pelt, quick throw to the tight end, Jose Ochoa. Dustin Staley is there to make the stop, gain of only two. Dustin Staley, well, that'd be tough to have a brother so good. I mean, it, it's great because you want him to be successful, but uh, it's sort of like you have to live up to it. Wet ball's got to get there pretty quickly, and still, Staley was, he just read it from the start. Staley Brothers from Tulaton, Oregon. Two tight end look. Van Pelt. Across the 30. He'll be short of the first down by about six. BYU should make an adjustment and keep the ball out of the quarterback's hands. How do you do that? Well, you watched Crouch the other day against Oklahoma, for example, and you just defend it to where you don't give him an option of running or pitching. You just say, hey, you have to pitch it. We're going to put a man on you. On that run, Ooh. you know what? Wow. Yeah, that's a that's break. An that's a penalty. That, that should be close to a first down. It's a break for Brigham Young. It was not flagged. Third down and six. Blitz coming. Van Pelt dumps it, and it's incomplete. Isaac Kelly made the hit on Jose Ochoa. What a blown opportunity for Colorado State. Davis has the clip. They bring it back, and then the bad call. That's going to be a no call that the coaches will take a look at that video. They may go for this here, fourth and six. Well, this is this is go go territory unless you just have a deadlock cinch as a with a field goal kicker you know if you don't make it you turn it back over to them at the 30. It would be a 47 yarder. Kent Naughton's long is 38. Van Pelt calls the timeout. Play clock was running down. And he wants to talk it over with his coach. We're in the Mountain West tonight and on Saturday with College Game Day, Chris, Lee, and Kirk will be in the Mountain West in Colorado Springs Air Force Academy to pay special tribute to the men and women of the United States Armed Forces. Colorado Springs, side of the Air Force Academy. 
Air Force takes on Army that day. It all starts at 10.30 Eastern on Saturday, college game day. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese? All right, Rich, and tonight, Chris Lee and Kirk are in Atlanta enjoying North Carolina and Georgia Tech. 28-14, Darian Durant played quite well all season in there by himself as a starter this time. It's Sam Aiken for the second time tonight. It's 28-21, still some time left. All right, thanks, Reese. Here it's 14 nothing Brigham Young. Brigham Young off to a, a quick start. Let's take another look at that run by Van Pelt. This was on a second down and watch the face mask. That's an inadvertent face mask, so it's a five yard penalty. Flag wasn't drawn, and so now you have a fourth and six. It would have brought up third down and about a yard and a half. Right. Here's the fourth and six again. Blitz on the way. Van Pelt. Hook it up. Gilford again. That's advantage BYU there. Gilford is by far the best cover man. And throwing it out is not the strong suit of Van Pelt. That's not a badly thrown ball, a poorly thrown ball, but it's just great defense. And guess who's back on the field? Brandon Doman, who's gone 80 and 67 yards in a total of about six minutes for that 14 0 lead. Staley out of the backfield to the 37 yard line. Caught there by Adam Wade, the sophomore linebacker. Rich, you know, this offense is so explosive. If you're Colorado State, a fan of Colorado State, you kind of look at that and you, you're holding your breath as Doman has the ball back there. There are Staley's numbers just scoring left and right. But, you know, you kind of feel like, well, he didn't find someone downfield and he didn't break out of the pocket for a big gain. You know, we, we got out of that play. Well, seven yards. Dolman will keep it. To the 47 yard line. What is the biggest difference between this offense and the old BYU days where they put so many points on the board with McMahon and Young and such like that? Well, just the game has changed so much. It is a game of blitz, blitz, blitz. And Croton's a, a guy that comes out and says, We're going to formation you, we're going to spread this field, and you're going to be so thin that we have a chance to make a big play on every down. And just like that last play, I mean, they were able to come out, see the formation, great audible into a perfect play. Another gain of 10. Doman again. Junior Mahe the catch. The 48-yard line. Five-yard pickup. Let's check in with Heather Cox. Well, Rich, during that entire offensive series for Colorado State, the defensive coordinator, Larry Kerr, kept going on and on about don't let Doman get out of the pocket and run. They want to contain any option running. Colorado State much more confident when Doman in the pocket. It's easier said than done so far tonight. Doman, another big game. 25 yard line before he's caught. <laughs> Jeff Brown made the stop 23 more yards. Croton looks and looks and looks for a defense's weakness, and this is a weakness. We've got a defensive end running straight out there, walling them off on the inside. The linebacker's not a factor. And that is just easy pickings there. There will need to be adjustments made immediately before Colorado State gets in a hole that they can't come out of. Final minute approaching first quarter. Doman inside screen. Mahe to the five, to the two. Aaron Sprague made the stop.
Well, call it luck, call it anticipation, call it smarts on the quarterback, but they are getting into the right play every time. Blitz from on top, opens it up. Doman looks off. Mahe gets it. It doesn't matter if they're running bubble screens, inside screens, whatever. It's working. First and goal from the two. Luke Staley in the backfield. Staley trying to get in. He does. Touchdown. His second tonight, his 39th career touchdown. And this is the worst nightmare for Colorado State. With any offense it is, for any team it is, but for that offense, yeah. I think BYU is out to make a statement tonight. Point is up and good. Well, you, you've heard this a million times, but you stick with what you do best. And they can run the football at BYU. They'll have to sprinkle in some passes, but they didn't exactly get shut out in that first quarter. They had 131 yards, and they had a big play call. There's Childs, and he's inside the 30 down to the 27-yard line. Let's check in with Reese Davis. What's going on in Atlanta? Well, they finished things up, Rich, and Joe Burns had a huge night, atoning for that disastrous outing three weeks ago. He was huge against North Carolina. 33 carries, 198 yards in this touchdown run. In fact, after Carolina scored his last touchdown, Tech didn't let him have the ball back. 28-21, the Jackets win it. Big win for Georgia Tech. It's a very tough loss for North Carolina. Now at five and four. First and ten. Draw to Childs. And he's the tougher of the two runners. He's the bigger guy at 6'2", 217. Yeah, Dwayne Ruff is uh, a little smaller. He's in there at about 5'8", 180. Now, Peppers did not play, right? For Carolina? Yeah, I, at least I think that's what he was coming with. Maybe Reese can tell us later. But uh, Peppers has led that Carolina club back from a terrible start. So they've been playing well. And Georgia Tech is just a solid football club. Second and eight. Van Pelt, nice pitch, Childs to the five, he trips, and he lands at the one. Henry Childs, the transfer from Kansas. Well, I'm liking this. They're throwing the ball some, especially BYU, but we're seeing lots of options. And that's perfectly executed there, Rich. I would have thought that with Van Pelt heading to the sideline that you wouldn't go ahead and force him to pitch. But they did, and it was perfectly executed. Thought it was going to be a touchdown, didn't you? I think Henri felt that way as well. First and goal. Childs, ooh, is he here? Walking horse, the first one to get there. Ryan Denny was there as well. There's Walking Horse, the sophomore. Well, you kind of gamble when you get down this low, and the gamble pays off here. Walking Horse comes around from the outside. You, you say, that, that's a play. If you have the quarterback on the outside or a toss sweep, you probably walk in. But a Walking Horse would not allow any walk in there. From the three, second and goal, Van Pelt. He's hit and stopped. Three times he was hit. Madrietta, the sophomore safety, got him to finish him off. Levi Madrietta. You know, I've been in this situation, and I can tell you what he's thinking right there. He sees the goal line. He thinks he's in. But all of a sudden, the pursuit gets there quicker than he thought. Now, he shrugged off a couple of them, but the angle got to it. Sonny Lubitsch going, God, John Ray, why didn't you just go ahead and not trip? Sonny Lubitsch teams usually run it right at him in this situation. Third 
going to throw it. Caught for the touchdown. Joel Dreesen. And Van Pelt with his seventh touchdown of the season limps to the sideline. Great play call there. Great play call. Extra point good. And Colorado State is on the board. Brad Van Pelt, Joel Dreesen, 21-7 BYU. Eight in the country, a 21-7 lead. But in the BCS, they're only number 13, as that, uh, that young lady has pointed out. Their remaining schedule. Now, how are they to know that Mississippi State was going to be one in five? Yeah, good point. Very good point. And you know, right now they are 110th out of 107 in terms of schedule strength. And they could end up about 100th based on that remaining schedule, but that's not very helpful. Raquel to a knee. In the coaches poll, the ESPN USA Today coaches poll, where are they? Number eight, okay? Yeah, and, you know, based on what I just said about the strength of schedule, they really need to pop up to number three or four before this thing is over. There they are at 13, and they're going to have trouble getting too much higher than that unless they get a lot of help from folks in there. Now, a number six finish in the BCS guarantees them a BCS game. Yeah. If they finish eighth in the BCS, they've got a shot because the, the Bulls can still choose them as an at large yeah, team. I think the best bet might be out of the Fiesta Bowl if they can get a high-profile team from out in uh, the Pac-10. On I first down, quick throw to Mahe. And Mahe is out to the 24-yard the line. 21-7, you know, BYU on top. Let's check in with Heather. Heather? Well, Rich, you mentioned that Coach Croton played at Colorado State. He was a quarterback in 1977, and he told me this week he knows exactly how it feels to play against BYU and lose badly. He said to this day he will forever remember the final score. BYU won 63 to 17, and Croton has used that experience this week in preparing his team. He said he knows how teams get fired up to play the Cougars, and Rich, for Croton, turnabout's fair play today. That's a good point. It's a great story in that game as Dolman throws a little center screen to Staley. Staley's out to the 37-yard line. Croton was a backup quarterback, and when he went in the ball game, he was told to turn around and hand the ball off. That was the only thing, to just hand the ball off. So Croton gives it, goes in the game and sees there's nobody lined up over the center, Dean. So he audibles for a quarterback <laughs> sneak. The problem is the center didn't hear it. Center stands up, Croton hits him and falls back on his rear end and gets yanked from the game. And he gets moved to defense. I know. Yeah. Next year, yeah. he's on defense. Yeah, if you're going to audible on your own, it better work. <laughs> Doman airs it out for Doug Jolly, and it's incomplete. Hey, now, Jolly can run. They, they don't mind locking him in on a, on a cornerback or a safety. He is very athletic, very well covered that time. But I've been most impressed with the time that Doman has had to throw the football. His offensive line is experienced, and they're big, and they're smart, and they are good. He's had time all night. Second and 10. <laughs> Doman. Scrambling. And escapes out of bounds with the first down. Those are the kind of quarterbacks that look at the smile on his face. Those are the kind of quarterbacks that drive defensive players nuts. You got, you got your linebackers and safeties who just love mauling quarterbacks anytime they get a chance. So linebackers are hanging in there, hanging in there pretty well. Whoop! Can't catch you. He's a 4-6 runner. Those linebackers are 4-8. Out of bounds. Can't touch me. Staley is touched. 
Rhett Nelson, the junior corner. That's the first loss of the day for Brigham Young. Good defense here. They understood what was going to come, and they are outnumbered. BYU is on the side, and it's funny when you have a, a running back when we brag so much on him, and he'll go on and have a great career, I'm sure, in the NFL. But when you get more guys over there tackling than they have over there blocking, you know, you get a good chance of getting him, and, uh, and that happened that time. It's stunning when a BYU play doesn't pick up nine or ten <laughs> yards, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? If Colorado State could get a stop here and drive it down and get some momentum, eat a lot of clock, well, they're back in this thing. And they're certainly in it now, but I mean really in it. We were talking a moment ago. They had a clip called that if they'd punched that one in, they'd really be right there, Rich. That's a good point. That, that clip on the long Van Pelt run made it from a 56-yard run to a 37-yard run, and the drive stalled right after that. Inside screen to Mike Rugel to the 49-yard line. Dean, you watched a similar game unfold when David Carr in Fresno State, unbeaten, looking for BCS respect, went to Fort Collins, off to a big lead, and they Colorado State grounded out, got back in the game, and really should have won the game. Yeah, they should have, and David Carr came down on a 27-yard, 22nd, excuse me, 27-second yard drive to tie it up with a field goal, but uh, they played very well that night, and offensively, they, they got after it. They responded every time Fresno scored. Third and nine. Staley on an inside handoff does not have the first down. Amir Lowe made the stop. Let's see what the Cougars do. The Cougars will go. I mean, I, that's the way this guy coaches. It's out to the... Uh, as soon as I say that, yeah, okay, I'm out there sending the punter out. Gary Crutton loves to go on fourth downs. Uh, he reminds me of Hal Mummy. Hal Mummy used to do it all the time down at Kentucky. Mummy's numbers were good, and so are Croton's. Speaking of good, look at the numbers at the bottom yeah. of your screen. Yeah. On fourth down. You know, I, fourth down numbers to me are a little confusing, though, because you get a lot of fourth and shorts, you know, a lot of fourth and ones. This is different. You know, this is fourth and four. Colorado State takes a timeout. Brigham Young faced with fourth and four when we get back to Provo. Brigham Young, fourth and four now for BYU. For Gary Croton's offense, this is this got to be a layup, right? Well, they've averaged 8.8 .8 yards per snap. Out of the 30 plays, they've had 20 of them go for five yards or more. On fourth and four, option with Doman, who's caught, and I don't think he got it. No, he didn't. They stop him at the 42-yard line. And a big stop for Colorado State. Yeah, it really is. Uh, they played better defensively. I think they it took a while to get used to the speed of the game. And since they've gotten used to it, they played better. This option has gone for them all game long, but they got a little penetration there. They got a little push. Drew Wood made the stop. ABC College Football Saturday is coming up. 21-7 here, Brigham Young over Colorado State. to the 45 as promised ABC college football this Saturday 3:30 Eastern 12:30 Pacific number six Michigan against Michigan State Michigan trying to stay in the driver's seat for the Big Ten title number 14 Florida State number 24 Clemson in the ACC and Oregon State and USC in the Pac-10 college football Saturday on ABC and the Bowden's going at it that's right Bowden Bowl what is that Bowden Bowl three yeah, I think so. Van Pelt cuts in, and Van Pelt is across the 40 to the 39-yard line. Jeff Cowart made the stop. There's been a lot of open spaces for these quarterbacks, and Van Pelt especially. Perfect read, getting good blocking in front of him. But what you have to do is... Uh, quarterback in option football unless there's a bust you have to run through arm tackles 
And he's been limping for the last series or two, Rich. He's been limping all year. Yeah. The way he plays. Childs to the 40, and that's it. A little fight going on. Walking horse. Flags come down at the 33 yard line. There's Paul Walking Horse. Better be big and mean if you're going to get in a fight with him. That's one of those that usually off, is offsetting. No. And that's a 15 yard variety. After the play, personal foul. Defense, 15 yards, first down. What good things are happening to Colorado State, and they're making them happen for the most part. Right here. From the 24, Brigham Young. Dan Pell in trouble. Gets out of it. He clobbered at the 22. He lands at the 20. He picks up six yards. He must have run 60. Well, that might be a highlight play. <laughs> has protection, has protection, and really could have hung in the pocket, but uh, he decides, no, I'm going to make something out of this. And there's no limp in that gate right there. What a... What a tackle, what a blow from Justin Enna. Tough quarterback though, huh? He's got 120 yards by himself. 95 on the ground. <laughs> That's a tough four yards. <laughs> a little reverse look. Rip stock with Van Pelt leading the way. <laughs> I love this Van Pelt cut. Yeah, that was beautiful. Three yards on that pickup. Who says quarterbacks aren't tough, huh? This guy is. Now, most quarterbacks will hand it off here and just kind of get out of the way, or, or they'll, they'll kind of run out there. He locks on with a defensive tackle. Oh, he locks on to it. Yeah. Coward picking out of the play. Coward's 6'4", 260. Three of four on third down tonight. Let's see what they come with here. And the BYU 18. Van Pell, oh, he keeps it. Touchdown! How about that? 18 yards. Bradley Van Pelt just put the Rams on his shoulders and took them down the field. I'm having a flashback here. He's reminding me of a Kansas quarterback named Nolan Cromwell. Very nice. Yeah. Nolan Cromwell was similar in size and could he run? If I remember correctly, he was a a sprinter at Kansas, 220 or 400 was so long ago, I don't think they called it 200 meters. <laughs> now a wide receivers coach for the Seattle Seahawks. He played for the Rams a long time, didn't he? He did. Bradley Van Pelt and Colorado State are back in this ball game. Number eight BYU on top, 21-14. Brad Van Pelt and Colorado State with two scores and it's a seven point ball game all of a sudden. And he's over 100 yards rushing by himself. And that was after he had a good amount of yardage called back on the clip 43 and five when they're over 100. Miguel watches that one sail into the end zone. That's a three iron. <laughs> Let's look at the touchdown. This is option, and it's well defended. It's well defended if 55 in him makes the tackle. But no, he didn't make the tackle. A little stutter step there. And number 11 running like a linebacker, fullback. What's the contact there? You see him? He didn't want to run away from that contact, so we just ran over and had a little pop there on the feet. 
Now it's Brandon Doman's turn. Colorado State showing blitz. Here they come. Doman. Doug Jolly, the tight end. Doman pass complete. Well, I don't know how this team would stack up with Michigan, Florida, and some of those other teams, but I'm telling you, that's a, that's a very good offense. They're picking up blitzes, giving the quarterback time. Did you see that, that, that tight end? Jolly snatched that ball out like a wide receiver, strong hands. Uh, this is solid. This is a wonderful offensive performance against a pretty good Colorado State defense. Doman again. That one's incomplete. And he was looking for Justin Anderson. That's the second time that Doman has missed a receiver that was open. That's pretty good. Out to the 37 yard line. And all of a sudden, Colorado State's defense has a little confidence. Well, I think they have seen all the formations, and not that they're going to shut them down the rest of the game, but I don't think they're going to see them and line up incorrectly. BYU does a great job of lining up in so many different formations that initially you just have trouble recognizing them, and then they exploit it because you're not in the right position. Third and five. They're coming. Dolman steps out of it, dropped the ball. That should be an incompletion, and it's picked up. Brian Sabe is into the end zone. It's ruled as a fumble, and Colorado State has a touchdown, but I think that was an incompletion. His arm went forward, and the ball went out. And that's what Gary Croton and the BYU coaches are saying. Well, they didn't throw a penalty. They can't, they don't have instant replay. This play is over. Now the officials are talking right now. Here's a look. That's an incompletion. I don't agree. I don't agree. I think it's a good call. I think it's a good call, Rich, because. And I love this to agree to disagree. Well, that's fine. Yeah, but, I'm, uh, I'm cool with that. But uh, and we'll see it again. But but he was coming back with the football. I think he was trying to bring it back and either secure it or look downfield again. The officials stopped play because somebody threw something onto the field, and they'll remove that. But this touchdown is going to stand, and that's big. That is big. <laughs> You're telling me he's big, Brian Sabe. The sophomore out of Santa Ana. And all of a sudden, Colorado State has scored 21 unanswered points. Here's another look. Whew. Big play in Provo. That is ruled a fumble. And it's the right call. Oh, boy. We're going to argue for a while here. <laughs> You know it's the right call because they gave him just got back. Look at the score. It's 21 all now. It was 21 nothing. Here's another look. Doman flushed out. It's ruled a fumble. Boy, I don't know. Well, I'm going with it. And <laughs> I think it's either, if it's not a fumble, it's either he's throwing it to a worm down there or it's an intentional grounding call. BYU will bring it out. Curtis Holder. To the 31 yard line. I think that Doman is trying to regather, to gather himself, I should say. He looks, he's trying to run. Now he sees a guy, and now after he after his, his arm goes forward, he tries to bring it back. And that's when he loses the, the grip. Well, I, I think we're gonna have to defer to 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 Mr. Gilmore and Gottfried and Davis at halftime. They'll be the yeah. deciding Reece, votes in this because Reece, we're split on this one. I want him to bank on Reese being the swing vote. I'm saying it's a it's a clean sweep. 
We saw Sonny Lubick in November. He's been splendid. He's won 19 of 22 in November. And this Colorado State defense all of a sudden has solved the Brigham Young puzzle. And that's saying a lot. This has been a stunning turn of events. Larry Kerr, the defensive coordinator, is a good one. And he has a good staff around him. But he's a guy who, and Rich, you know from being around him, he's a guy who doesn't overreact. He's a calm presence. He is right back there. And he understood it. He had his guys calm on the sideline. He didn't push any panic buttons. And there's a long way to go. And this is an explosive BYU offense. They've done a miraculous job here in adjusting. Now Doman throws it over the middle. And it's caught there by Doug Jolly, the tight end. He's got a first down to the 48-yard line, 15 yards. Well, Larry Kerr told us that he's not going to stop these guys. It's but if they could just slow them down, he'd be happy. And they have at times. Uh, good job again, throwing on the run. That's a, that's a good football there. Tight spiral, moving, and he hits his man right in the, right in the face mask. Dolan hits his man again, Jolly, at the 45. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese? All right, Rich, I'm going to have both these guys decide whether that was a fumble. Also coming up at the half, we'll have North Carolina and Georgia Tech. And we'll look into the proliferation of trickeration as I morph into Clyde Frazier for just a moment across college football. And we'll also look at hidden videos, some moments you might have missed from the past weekend. We'll see you in just a few minutes. This one looked like obliteration <laughs> when it was 21-0 Brigham Young. And now it's 21-21. Yeah, you know, I'm surprised they didn't check out of that one because for once and I, mean, I don't know that you'll ever see Luke teams with eight in the box it. against this BYU club. But that's Here's what the happened there. Larry Kerr said, you know what, we're going to put eight up there and if you can, if you can want to throw it, go ahead. But uh, we think you're going to run it. They did. You know, Sonny, Sonny Lubick spends a week every summer in Florida, which isn't that odd, but he goes to Tampa, which is where the Tampa Bay Bucks are. And he studies that zone blitz by the Bucks. He brings it back. And the BYU coaches told us that Colorado State runs Tampa Bay's defense as well as Tampa Bay does. Yeah, and there are a lot of teams that try to do it. Dolman on the option. He pitches it for Stanley. Stanley to the 20. Did he stay in bounds? Into the end zone. These fans can lose Luke all they want. But someone needs to throw a little go, go, doman out there. That was an unbelievable play by the quarterback in Doman as he was going down. Third touchdown of the night for Staley. His 20th of the season, his 40th in his career. And the point is good. Ties a Brigham Young record. With his 40th career touchdown. And this one got some help from Brandon oh, Doman. Oh, 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 oh. oh, maybe he stepped out. We're going to have to look at this one again. You jump to a 21-0 lead in this one. Colorado State tied it, and Luke Staley on a 40-yard run off the pitch from Brandon Dolman. We've still got a minute 54 left in this first half. Dexter win to the 34-yard line. Okay, remember the call. There's a flag down back to the 38-yard line. Flag down at the 38. BYU which usually indicates BYU is offsides, and obviously there's a player down for Colorado State. I think that yeah, better be certain. I thought it was healed. We'll wait on that. Gerald Wright with the call. Encroachment on the kicking team. They'll decline it. 
This is okay. Remember the remember the call that went against BYU. Watch the right foot of Staley right there. It looks like he's on the line. But he was ruled in bounds. Sonny Lubick wasn't real happy. And obviously that was in front of the BYU bench so he had to get a, a, an intelligence report from <laughs> one of his defensive players. Well Gary Croton feels a little bit better about it but what jumps out to me is that and healed went down and was doing a lot of screaming it did not look good when he went down and it's a right knee. Here comes heel. Mm, mm, mm. Heel backs up Adam Wade and he's a nice player also backs up Polly. That's a look of concern and. Now Colorado State had the return out across the 30 about the 33 yard line but they're going to make him re kick it. They want to. Sonny wants the ball in the hands of Dexter Winter. Yeah Red right Star. right. It was pretty good field position but you're exactly right. That's what uh, they want to do. That's how good a return man rep stocks good. Mm -hmm. But Wynn is superior and they love having the football in his hands. Now what Croton does is he gets creative on special teams and that last kickoff was one that they it was it was unconventional. Let's we'll see what he does here. The wind came up and fielded that ball about the 15 yard line tried to kick it short. Now they kick it out of bounds. Flags are down. Well, we had a three iron a while ago on a Colorado State kickoff, and that was about a four iron duck hook. Into the water, two, two shot penalty, and scooted on back. Kick out of bounds. Five yard penalty. Ball will be re kicked. Colorado State can choose to take it on the 40 or to have a re kick. They're going to re kick it at the 25. Wow. All right, noon Eastern. ESPN, ESPN 2. It starts in the Big Ten. These two teams still have title hopes. Kurt Kittner in Illinois. Brandon Hans and number 15, Purdue. Noon Eastern on ESPN. Then on ESPN 2, Joe Paterno and Penn State face a very good Southern Miss team. That's at noon Eastern on ESPN 2. College football Saturday on ESPN and ESPN 2. For more, log on. To ESPN.com. So field position should be uh, terrific for Sonny Lubick's bunch. They're backed up to the 25 yard line. We told you about Colorado State's defense. They are pretty good in a high scoring conference. They're second, limiting opponents to 20 a game. Aaron Edmonds is back at his 25 yard line with Mr. Rebstock and Wynn still waiting to touch the ball. Wynn caused that last hook. They were trying to keep it away from him. Rebstock, that is 19. And Rebstock breaks outside. Rebstock's out to the 45 yard line. So it took a while, but Colorado State makes it 16 yards. Let's check in with Heather Cox. Well, guys, a quick update on Doug Heald. He did injure that right knee. They're testing for ACL and MCL tears. They will evaluate further in the locker room during the half. They don't think he'll return. There's a minute 40 left in the half. Van Pelt with a draw. And across midfield goes Van Pelt. He's down to the 42 yards. They just can't stop him. Now, when he gets in a mode like this, they can't. And what? BYU is doing. Ken Schmidt told us guys every play before you run out of there in you're checking quarterback draw check quarterback draw. Walking horse can't even get a hand on the guy. And they are aware of that play. That is the defensive coordinator on this. Ken Schmidt been around here forever. 20th year. Clock rolling. Kyle's getting outside and importantly getting out of bounds because this is not an offense that can run a two minute drill and stop the clock with completions and incompletions yeah. and first down. Only one timeout so they need plays like that. 
And it's an offense that they're going to take their shots. You know, they're going to be very selective when they go deep. What an adventurous half for Van Pelt. 127 yards rushing. Adventurous half for everyone sitting at home. <laughs> Second and eight. Look out. The pelt. And it's incomplete. The pelt pass. Well, that, that's just a play that I know it looks good on the chalkboard. They use chalkboards these days. But that play didn't. No, it didn't have any flow to it. Seemed confused from the beginning. He was fortunate to not get caught from the backside. Boy, Ryan Denny had a free look at him. I, I don't know what happened to Denny, but you know we haven't called Denny's name very often. It's a good point. 92 blue, in case you forgot. Third and eight, or three of five on third down and a half. Let's see what Van Pelt can create here. He's going to give it to Childs. Who has the first down at the 29 yard line? Dustin Staley. Well, that stops the clock. See how unconventional this offense is? But it works. Well, you've got them thinking option, option, play, action, pass. And that one comes right at you. There's no delay. And Andre Childs takes advantage of a BYU defense that has not been tackling well. Now the clock starts. Van Pelt. The tuck it again. Good move. Trying to get outside. Does. Gets out of bounds and stops the clock. Justin Anna made the stop. The heart of this kid is enormous. Yeah. Yeah. And how far has he come? And you know, he's just picking him up in chunks. This is not a designed run, I don't believe. But he makes it that way, and he gets out of bounds like you were mentioning, and they still have that one timeout remaining. He's got that, uh, that Van Pelt toughness. Yeah, he does. Like his dad. Second and short, first down stops the clock. One timeout left for Colorado State. Childs has the first down. Clock will stop. Colorado yeah. State's got to be quick about this. Yeah, you got to get on the ball. I don't think they'll throw it down. I mean, I don't think they'll spike it. They have a play they should call and get immediately on the ball. That they're ball they're will huddling be set. up right now. They need to go. They're huddling up. Need to go. Get on the ball. Clock starts. And they're wasting time. Yeah, they are. Clock started with over 30 seconds, and they'll snap this one with about 20. They just lost 10 seconds. 11. Wow. And they keep it on the ground. They've got to burn the time out. Out now. Wow. And at the 14-yard line now, with 14 seconds left. Well, it's been a nice job in the comeback in getting some offense going. Dan Hammerschmidt and John Benton share the duties as offensive coordinators. They split it up. But I didn't understand that. I mean, you've, you've got to get on the football and snap it. This, in college, the clock stops. They reset it after a first down. I get the playoff. The big man there is John Benton. The little coach there is Matt Lubick. That's Sonny's yeah. son. He was on Dennis Erickson's staff last year at Oregon State. The danger here, Dean, no timeouts left. And if Van Pelt goes on one of his rampages and is caught without getting out of bounds or a first down, the half is essentially over. They won't have time to get up and. No, you've got to play with the flanks. You've got to do things on the outside, whether it's him scrambling, option, throwing it on the outside, or take a shot down the middle. But then I guess you could take a shot down the middle and, and still pick up a first down and then get on the ball, but you can't do as much as you would have been able to do had you managed the Final seconds in what has been a wild first half. Van Pell pumping, throwing, corner, caught out of the end zone. <laughs> Joey Kapari, the intended receiver. Nine seconds left. 
Time for another shot? <laughs> yeah, there's time for another shot. Uh, you, you throw that ball, and the logic is you throw it where only your man can catch it. And that was one where no one could catch it. Got to make sure you don't get trapped back there and let the clock run out. Got to get the ball out of your hands. And Pelt again into the end zone. Redstock got it! Touchdown! Oh, Pete Redstock! Wait a minute! They ruled it out! One official said touchdown, and now they're going to talk about it. Brandon Heaney was on the coverage. The official on the left said touchdown. The one on the right said no. Here's the call. I didn't think it was close, but we're a long way away. Pass is ruled. Incomplete. Fourth down. My goodness. 2.7 seconds left. Here's a look. Four versus four. Two great football players. Oh, that's a touchdown. Oh, man. I think that's a touchdown. It's in slow motion, but it seemed like he had the football forever. One, two feet wow. down. That's a touchdown. Wow. Bad call. That's a touchdown. Bad call. We've had several questionable calls here in an unbelievable first half. He had not one, but he had two down before it was ripped out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, those officials better be happy that Sonny Lubick's uh, team is on the other sideline. Touchdown. So get three points out of it. Uh, Kent Naughton from 31 yards. Gary Croton calls timeout. Doesn't he know we've got Mike Godfrey and Rodney Gilmore <laughs> waiting in the studio? Well. All I know is I really right, let's see if Kent Naughton is true from 31. After a long wait, the kid steps up and drills it. And so Sonny Lubick doesn't get seven. He does get three. And he's going to let those officials know as soon as he gets them in his sights. Just a wild first half here in Provo. Number eight, Brigham Young, 28. Colorado State 24. Well, one too many times. Thanks, Heather. And Colorado State's going to get the football. Dexter Wynn. Flags are down, and Wynn is down. Flag down at the 13. Wynn brought it out to the 18. I think Gerald Wright had an interesting <coughs> halftime. They had a busy first half. Well, based on the comments, back in Bristol and upstairs in the press box. Uh, it was an interesting first half. Interesting is a mild word. Van Pelt, though, with the sprained ankle, got it nicked up a little bit in the first half. And his passing numbers are not good, but his running numbers are just terrific. And he completed his first two balls, Rich, and after that, Nothing. And then he literally willed his team back into the ball game. I mean, you're getting those two touchdowns on the drives. Van Pelt was the feature runner. Your note was a good one. Neither team punted in the first half. First and ten off the penalty. Childs to the eight yard line. Childs very quietly had 83 yards in the first half. And some of them were very big yards. Yeah, that, that third down, that third conversion. down and seven he picked up. You're right. Crowd of over 60,000 on hand. They watched the first half. They saw Brigham Young take a 21-0 lead. Van Pelt on the draw. And Brigham Young had it defended nicely. Well, I don't know if BYU will defend anything nicely except that. They, they went in at halftime. And they <laughs> said, guys, we're going to stop this quarterback, and we're certainly going to stop him from running the draw right up the gut. I don't see how walking horse can see. That helmet he has comes right down over his noggin. The last third and seven they had, it was... Childs over left tackle for eight yards. Kept that drive alive. 
Five and seven on third down tonight. Well, this is where you don't want to make a mistake if you're Van Pelt. And they probably won't put him in a position where he can make too big a mistake. With time and a man, it's Ochoa. He's across the 30. Ochoa slides into the 46-yard line. That's a 38-yard catch and run and a very well-designed play. Yeah, it was a, a very well-designed play because Ochoa held up. He waited, he waited, and then he slipped out of the backfield. No linebacker to be found. And that's who's his primary receiver from the beginning. So Hammerschmidt, Benton come up with one in the press box. Option. Whoa. Okay, now that's what I talked about. Walk, the walking horse brought Van Pelt down. Yeah. So there are different ways to play the option. And there's that helmet I was talking about. I don't, I don't know how he sees out of that. But there are different ways to play the option. One is to make sure the quarterback pitches. And that time he should have pitched. But in the first half, of course, he didn't pitch and cut it up, cut it up with a big yardage. Sophomore out of Highland, Utah is Walken Horst. And a big linebacker, 6'5, 255. Second down, Henri Childs. Childs to the 20, the 10, caught at the 5. Madrietta caught him from behind, and Colorado State is picking up where they left off at the end of the first half. These holes are big. Colorado State's offensive front, yeah, Finlinson and Showit, those guys are opening up holes that are just huge. And usually you see that with a team that really has a great passing game. But Colorado State doesn't. I mean, they have 25 yards the whole first half. Ken Schmidt needs to figure this out. Childs is out, Ruff is in. Van Pelt hit to the five. Oh, he got in. He ran right over someone. And he's still not down. He is the toughest quarterback in America. He's certainly the most physical. <laughs> and he could run into an oncoming train and not fall down. Now that shows some toughness. That means that shows going in at halftime and a coach saying, guys, we're coming back. We got to fight like we always have and take it down there, even in bad field goal position. What a drive by Colorado State. Bradley Van Pelt. He was a linebacker at Michigan State. He's a quarterback here. No, he's a linebacker. Oh, that's a middle linebacker he just ran over. A 93-yard drive at Colorado State. State 31, Brigham Young 28. The night of Bradley Van Pelt continues to, to amaze. Well, he should have been tackled right here by Kiesel in the background, in the backfield. So now he busts loose. He has the forward momentum. He goes into the linebacker. That's in the 267 on the sideline. He just said, well, why wouldn't I go after him? <laughs> Justin Ennis, 6'3", 261, and he ran him over. The Wild Onion Urban Adventure Race. Stay with me on this one, Dean. All right, ESPN cameras caught all the action of a 62 co-ed, three-member teams as they went to the streets of downtown Chicago. It's a 24-hour race, $25,000 on the, on the line. Running, kayaking, rappelling, canoeing, inline skating. And it's 62 coming up. Co -ed. Yeah, 9 Eastern this Friday. All right, I'm saying it's Manana. I'm saying Croton figures something out and they get going here. Dolman, there's Mahe. And Junior Mahe is out to the 42 yard line. Five in the spot in that zone on the sideline. Now, this is where Croton and his offensive coordinator, Mike Borich, say that they, they think they really excel here because they let an entire half go by and they think by that time, they have a great feel for what they can do. And that's when you make adjustments. And that's why I say, I'll bet you they score on this drive. Wagering is illegal I would, at Bushwood. They have a, 
I say they score. I don't, <laughs> I don't mention they score. <laughs> All right. Staley is knocked out of bounds. And I never slice. Out of bounds at the 43 <laughs> is Staley. You know, Brandon Dolman, in all seriousness, and Luke Staley just raced to three long touchdown drives in their first three possessions. What happened in the second quarter, Dean? How, how did Colorado State slow them down? Colorado State decided that they were going to play aggressive on defense, aggressively. They were passive. I, I don't think they were as much in bad position as they sat back and let BYU take it to them. But just like that touchdown run a minute ago, Anna let Van Pelt take it to it. The aggressor wins in sports. Dolman a quick throw to the sideline. And it's completed to Toby Christensen. Let's check in with Heather Cox. A couple of injury updates for you, Rich. Spencer Need, who was injured in the first quarter, has spasms in that shoulder, can't raise his arms, will not return. Also, sophomore center Scott Jackson with that sprained knee is out for the game. Puts a lot of pressure on Jason Sukanik. He started every game this season, but as a reminder, he tore his MCL in that left knee a week ago against San Diego. Good stuff, Heather. Toby Christensen with his first catch. That's Todd's son. So Toby's got a catch in the ball game. He's a good looking athlete. On third down, Dolman scrambling and throwing. It's caught by the tight end, Doug Jolly. Think that quarterback's a winner. Think he's a gamer. Now, now Jolly can play too. But you've got a quarterback that you have a lot of faith in in making plays when on third and three, he does that. Five catches tonight. It's first and ten now. Brigham Young. You know, that's frustrating for a defense there, Rich, because you've got him where you want him. You've got good position on him. You've got pressure coming on him. Looks like you have him sacked. Looks like you have everyone covered. But he goes to his tight end. It's always a good safety valve, and Doman really goes to his tight ends. Doman on the draw. And he has a block. And a lane. Doman to the ten. He's in. Touchdown, Brigham Young. Well, I know we can't bet, but since I can't say I won the bet, can I say I told you so? I mean, they're smart offensively. They're good offensively. They have talent, and they want to respond. The momentum has shifted back. And they're going to go for two. So, well, wait a minute. No, they're not. They brought a couple of guys in. The crowd was calling for two. <laughs> well, I wouldn't question Croton about anything. I was looking up his footwork going now. Uh, doesn't make sense, but he's brilliant. Point is up and good. <laughs> 37 yards. Brandon Doman answers Bradley Van Pelt. And BYU is back on top. Right into the end zone. This is the weak side linebacker here. He's got to make the play. Pauly, he's going to get nothing but air. Didn't even catch the foot. At and the, then, yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. End of the run, watch Staley. Whoa. <laughs> but a man has got to make his play. It, this is, it, you know, in football, it's so much now one-on-one -on -one that if you miss a tackle, doesn't matter if it is the quarterback, you're going to get upset. BYU refuses to kick to Dexter Wynn and Pete Rebstock. A pair of 11s here tonight. Brandon Doman, Bradley Van Pelt. Compare the two. Well, they do it in different ways. You got the, the passer over here, and you have the runner over here. And look at the numbers. They both produce six touchdowns between them. Clearly the leaders of their club. Career highs for both of them in terms of rushing <laughs> touchdowns. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, the interesting thing about this football team is BYU may be good enough to go beat all those teams, but we're probably never going to find out. Van Pell, not drop back to him. A little revenge from Kiesel, who missed the sack on that last touchdown. And it's second down and ten. Well, there may be a takedown coming up right there. Well, that was in the middle of your screen. 
But you know, the football these days, they've gotten so liberal with pass protection and other areas in holding. Holding could be called on every play, and it certainly could have been called there. Option for Van Pelt. Let's see if they make him pitch it. Walkenhorst grabbed him at the 41 yard line. And it's third down and about four. Colorado State is doing such a good job of getting a push off the line. They're, they're, they're getting BYU pushed back far enough that the quarterback can come down the line. He doesn't get deeper. Matt Lubick, who signals in the play, Sonny's kid. Third and four. Red stock in motion. Van Pelt will throw it, and he overshot Red Stock. And this will be, I think, the very first punt of the football game. It is. It may not be a record, but it's close. It's been a long time. <laughs> I'm sure there's been a game without one. Yeah. We won in sixth grade one time. We never punted. Scored every time. You no, know, but you're right. Neither team has punted. Joey Huber is a good one. He is one of the finalists for the Ray Guy Award. One of 10 finalists. Averages 43 a kick. And usually has good hang time. Mike Regal deep. Not a good kick. They mark it at the 25. 34 yard kick. Not good. Could have pinned BYU deeper, and you sure want to do that to an offense as explosive as BYU, especially one that when just drove it down your neck. Lavelle Edwards Stadium holds 65,000. I expect there's about 63, 64 in here tonight for a Thursday night edition of ESPN2 College Football. Great setting, isn't it, Rich? Absolutely. At the foot of the Wasatch Mountains, the Provo. Snow on the mountains. They'd like a lot more of them with the Olympics coming up. Yeah. In three months. This is Staley. And Staley busts out to the 46 yard line. 21 yards. We may look back at the end of the game and say that this was the most significant portion of the game because BYU seems to have regained momentum. They seem to have figure th figured things out. And this is just simply a toss sweep. They do a great job of locking on man, getting helmet on helmet. And Staley's a tough guy when you get him around the corner with not much defense. Kind of a forgotten story in this game, but he's over 100 yards you know, on only 12 carries. These guys will line up some tight ends now. They'll line up two or three tight ends off of Staley, that is a nice tackle. On the corner, Jason Gallimore. <laughs> this is when your safeties have to come up. I think you talked about them earlier having to have big games, and Gallimore, they're in pretty good shape on the option. Staley's not an easy guy to bring down, especially in open field. State shows blitz. Here they come. Dolman, a great scrambler. He's caught at the 48 yard line. Running him down was Drew Wood. Colorado State's linebackers are all sophomores. There will be some talent left for next season on this defense. Well, there will. And you're looking at one of the sophomores there, Drew Wood. He and Eric Pauley are a great story. Number 33, their roommates. And they're two guys so bright that they may be candidates to become Rhodes Scholars. Side by side, bunk by bunk, Rhodes Scholar, possibilities, one story. They're one and two in the Mountain West in tackles That's as right. well. Pauly with 83, Wood with 75 coming in. Now Doman's throw is caught. Breaking loose is Mahe. And Reno Jr. Mahe. He's out to the 29-yard line. In this type of offense, 
We talked about one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's tackling, whatever the scenario. And in this place, in this case, you just have a quick little, quick out. He finds a soft spot in the defense, and you better make the tackle. If you don't, you're an open field, and you have receivers and, and uh, tailbacks who are just dangerous, and, and Mahe might, might be as dangerous as there is in the field. He was a running back when he arrived here in Pro Bowl. Now he's their top receiver. Dolman, the screen was covered. Dolman steps out, and Dolman is inside the 25, out of bounds of the 21. Fans wanted the flag. Drew Wood was chasing him. BYU did a smart thing there. Lots of times when the defense is not ready, inexplicably, an offense will go up and the quarterback will wait. But Colorado State comes up, they aren't ready. Doman says, hey, forget it. We're going to snap the ball anyway. Now, they got into a position where they weren't able to come back with that screen. Doman able, though, still to make a man miss him and pick up positive yardage. And that very easily could have been a play, though. He just did tap him. That's, yeah, you know, yeah. he hit him five or seven yards out of bounds. It's Staley, direct snap, he's going to score. I think the next time he takes a snap, they either, either need to call a timeout or realize he's going to run it right at him. His fourth touchdown of the night, his 41st in his career, he's now the, the leader all time here at Brigham Young. And this is a real danger zone for Colorado State because yes, it is. Brigham Young's offense has come out firing in this second half. Point is up and good. Stretches the lead to 11. Luke Staley for the fourth time. 42-31, Brigham Young. Webster. He's going to bring it out. Red stop across the 20 to the 24-yard line. Let's check in with Heather Cox. Heather? Rich, I'm joined by Athletic Director for BYU, Val Hale. And Val, I think we're all curious about the BCS perception and how you feel that BYU fits into it. Well, we obviously have a lot of work to do in this game to begin with, but I think at the end of the year, if we're 13 and 0, I think we'll we'll be a contender of some sort. All right, Val, let's flash back a little bit. This is the first year that you've worked with Coach Croton, but the relationship dates back to high school when he threw passes to you. Yeah, he was a great quarterback, great athlete all around. We pole vaulted together. He he was a, a good quarterback, very good, and and a great person. Childs to the 27. Let's go back to Heather. Val, a little bit curious. Do you think this team can go undefeated? And if so, does it deserve a top six pick? Well, I think with the offense we have, I think we can definitely play with anybody. We, we, if we get a few breaks, obviously it's a long season, 13 game regular season, longest in the country. So we have to, we have to take it one at a time. The coach says it's a cliche, but it's the truth. We've really got to do it that way. Thanks for your time. Best of luck. Thank you, Heather. And I don't see their schedule as big an issue as the BCS problem. Look at Childs go across the 35. Isn't, though, the schedule part of the BCS Yeah, problem? yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. And, and you know, they're just not going to get many points. And I think another part of the problem is that the new rule this year is that if you play a, a quality team, say a top 15 team, and you beat them, then you're going to get extra points. And BYU doesn't play any of those, those people. It's not their fault. You know, Mississippi State, they thought they'd be a top 15 type team. Yeah, they did. They scheduled them. Of course, that game was moved. It was canceled early in the season and moved to December 1st. Rebstock in motion. This is Henri Childs. Running hard to the 43-yard line, Justin Enna made the stop. Now, if you saw the first half, and many of you are just joining us for the first time, Brigham Young raced to a 21-0 lead, only to have Colorado State come right back and tie it at 21. And here in the third quarter, it feels an awful lot like the first quarter because Brigham Young has come out, and they have stretched their lead to 11. Their offense, as explosive as it's been all year, on display in both the first and the third quarters. Let's see if Colorado State can answer. Van Pelt. 
he doesn't take the easy way out. And, you know, he's had great rushing numbers, and therefore his team has run the ball, has rushed the ball very well. And you sort of have to when you don't throw it any better than they do. But uh, rush yards, that's a lot of yards right there. BYU has its share as well, but 334. They're on pace for a 500-yard rushing round, and, and it might be one they get beat by 15, 18 points. Van Pelt has 157 of those rushing yards. And a lot of them have come with his head down at the end of the run. Childs, big hole, and he spins around to the 40. Two-yard line, a nine-yard pickup, short of the first down by a yard. Hey, I'm telling you, those guys up front are doing a terrific job. Eric Pears is the new guy. You got a glimpse of him there. There he is, number 74. He's lined up next to his brother Morgan Pears. But Eric Pears had his man back about nine yards on that try. There's another pair. There's the pair of pairs there, but there's another pairs that Medifield will be the best of the bunch. Childs to the 21-yard line. Now, now, this is why I think teams around the country look and say, you know, Big Ten-type teams, say maybe Michigan or uh, Nebraska will look and they say, now, you know, this is a defense that just can't stop big, strong, powerful teams. Missed tackle there. It may be a scoring fest, you know, if, if this uh, team was to go play a, a Nebraska or really any of those teams at the top. But I come back and say what we said earlier, and that is this BYU defense, BYU defense has been one that has been kind of soft in the middle of the field, and they get after it inside the 20. First and 10, Van Pelt. There's the draw. And Van Pelt to the 12. Madriana made the stop. He doesn't run the ball. He sort of wills the ball down the field. And I told you, he's a lot like his head coach, Sonny Lubick. Brad Van Pelt is a young man who wants to play so badly. He's got tremendous athletic ability. Could be a halfback, could be a, a wide receiver. Yet he wants to play quarterback, and he is learning it as he goes along. He's going to be something special as time goes on. Dwan Ruff to the 10-yard line. A walking horse. Flags go down at the five-yard line. After the play, there's four flags sitting in the vicinity of the five. It was away from the ball, and I, quite honestly, Dean, I didn't see it. I didn't either. This guy did. After the play, personal foul, offense, 15 yards, first and 10. So obviously, it goes against Colorado State. And it's a huge penalty. It's a 15-yarder. Well, so they'll have to dial up the quarterback again, Van Pelt. You know, we heard Sonny talk about him a minute ago, and it, one of the things that Van Pelt said really stood out to me, and it, it should serve as inspiration to kids struggling in sports or wherever, because this guy's all of a sudden become a star, a leader. But it, it was about three weeks ago, he said, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I didn't know anything about my football career. It was uncertain. He said, I was even uncertain about my life. And all of a sudden, he's turned around. He's played hard, played well, and he's in pretty good shape right now. All right, let's take a look away from the ball in that last play, see if we can pick it up. Top of your screen. Right there, coming back right there. Oh, that was, yeah, the, that was, was a, the last swap. It was the last, you're right, the last one. And it is after the run, and they picked up a first down, so it's first and 10, not second and 25. That's really a break for Colorado State. Ben Pelt, who lost the ball, got it back. Got it back. Ochoa, Ochoa, I think, fell on it. He did. The big tight end. See, the only problem with running that option the way he's doing is, is 
they're wasting a running back. They're wasting the back, who is the pitch man. Not that it hinders him at, at all. No, I mean, it doesn't. I'm just trying to figure out a way to utilize the body back there. And one of the ways you do it is you force the defense. Instead of running horizontal, you run more vertical. So he picks up the first down. And it's first and ten again. Henry Childs running hard again. Walking horse, the first to hit him for Brigham Young. Just watch those big old guys up front. They don't get enough recognition, but tonight they're doing a job. Childs is getting running start. Childs is getting closer to 200 yard range. 189. Yeah, he's done a great job, but Rich, I'm saying you'd have 100 right now. Second and seven. Now the defense can jump. Defense did not make contact. That will probably go against Colorado State. Ball start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still yep. second down. Show it. Show it. Left tackle. David Show it. It's easy to do. You know you instinctively you, you you want to move but you can't on offense on defense you can jump and then but get back instinctively you can go at a at a cadence at a, at a quarterback's bark Teresa in motion a second down Van Pelt they had the drop sniffed out and they get Van Pelt back at the 22 yard line Isaac Kelly, Jeff Cullen, finished them off. Third down and long coming up. Coward number 94. That's the first sack of this game for Brigham Young. Well, and that's unusual that they are, it's a little bit of a surprise that they're the leading sack team in the conference because they are a conservative defense. Third and 17. Blitz coming. Van Pelt. Has a man at the 10. He's short of the first down. Well, decision to make here. Field goal puts you within eight. I think you take your points. Henri Childs made the catch. And Van Pelt says, look, we <laughs> you gotta go for it here. Look at those eyes. Great shot. Good job. Mobility avoids the tackle. And that's, that's tackle. Ryan Denny yeah. that avoided. That's a good that's a good ball for a guy who's not recognized as a thrower. Denny the sack leader in the Mountain West. He's been sackless tonight. Kent Naughton. Tough angle. And he got it. 25 yards on the field goal. Well, you had to take that. You had to take the points. Now you're within eight, a touchdown and two. ESPN2 is headed to your territory, going to SEC. You've been around those parts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Arkansas Ole Miss, 7 Eastern. Eli Manning. The Ole Miss Rebels are 6-1. and one. How come they're not getting respect in the polls? College Football Saturday, 7 Eastern on ESPN2. Rodney Dangerfield's all around the country. I mean, no respect. Now, wait a minute. Ole Miss comes in at 6-1 and one to that game. They're not even in the coaches' top 25. It's got to be a mistake. They've got to be a misprint. They beat LSU on the road last week? And no, I, they're, they're good. They are really good. You want to knock out Colorado? Clemson can't do that. Georgia, Mark Richt has them going. Syracuse, they're number 22. They've got it rolling. I don't know. Georgia Tech, a winner tonight. I mean, there's a lot of good teams out there. There are only, however, three undefeated teams. I hear you. Mississippi is the first under others receiving votes. BYU at 8 0, Nebraska at 9 0, Miami at 6 0. So, Colorado, Clemson, Georgia, Syracuse, Georgia Tech. Rich Walls doesn't like you. I think Ole Miss is better than Colorado. How's that? Ah, okay. Mike 
for Gill. And Miguel with a nice return out at the 40 yard line. By the way, I'm taking Colorado in that deal. Oh, you are, huh? Okay. Clemson? I take Clemson. No, I, I like Mississippi. I'm going to get in trouble down at Ole Miss, but I'm just saying there are a lot of really good clubs around. Okay. <laughs> now let's see if Colorado State's defense can solve Brigham Young's offense because BYU yeah. in this half have marched 80 and 75 yards yeah. on their two possessions. And That's right. It, and they've done it in a total of 11 plays. Yeah, it, the game is in the hands of the white team on defense. Staley's pitch, or rather, Doman's pitch to Staley. And the clock continues to roll. That's a, a nice stop by Jason Gallimore. The Gallimores have been all over the place. Jason and Justin. There they are together. You know, they kind of help each other by the two of them being out there because even if they don't have great games, people here over the loudspeaker system here and us say Gallim Gallimore. 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 He said it a lot last week. Jason holding his elbow. He had nine tackles, an interception, a fumble recovery, two deflections. He was the Mountain West Defensive Player of the Week. Well, that Gallimore was. That that Gallimore. That, uh, He'll bring in a near low now. That'll do it. Three very entertaining quarters and one more to go from Provo 42 34 BYU. News and what has been a real entertaining football game. Rich Waltz, Dean Blevins, Heather Cox, Brandon Doman at the controls of the BYU offense. And what an offense has been tonight. Junior Mahe, the catch out at the 41 yard line. Our game tracks, some of the pictures and some of the highlights of this one. Bradley Van Pelt, the hard nosed quarterback for Colorado State, has been running over linebackers and willing his team back in this game. Brandon Dolman has answered. He has 133 yards on the ground. The BYU quarterback has done it in the air and on the ground. And how about Luke Staley with four more touchdowns for BYU? Dolman's the trigger man. Saw the arm strength there, the 15 yard out to the field, and he can run it. Dolman in trouble. Lost the lost ball. The football. And. Ben Archibald, his tackle, recovered it. Not another fumble that BYU recovered. And let's watch where the strip comes. His own guy. Oh man. Yeah. Dustin Reichert. So that's three fumbles tonight. They recovered all of them. Well, four no, fumbles. Four, the, four fumbles. Remember the good call? Oh, you're right. The, yeah. No, yeah, yeah right. The incompletion? No, I. Incompletion would have been on the statistics uh, gotcha. as an incompletion. It came as a fumble one. Twenty-eight fumbles. They've lost only seven this year. There's Dolman to the twenty. Well, this Colorado State defense is doing what it did early in the ball game, is, and that is it's playing on its heels. And there's more to it than that. You've got to be in the right position. But a lot of it has to do with just not being as aggressive as you should. And right now, Doman has everything going his way. He kind of picks through there like a running back, doesn't he, Woodridge? Well, at 6'1", 195. Yeah, he doesn't look that big, but he's good size. Yeah, he is. 205, according to some now. Both these quarterbacks would make fine tailbacks someplace. Luke cuts back. There's a flag down back of the line of scrimmage. He's staying with a tremendous effort. He's in the end zone, but it might be coming back. Yeah, that one will come back. Reload the cannon. Just like our ball game tonight, full of entertainment, that play was full of entertainment. Wonderful blocking by BYU. The penalty and then even a more impressive run. Holding offense, 10 yard penalty. There's the Repeat. takedown. First down. And it's a good call. Blocking out in front, proper execution. 
But at the top right up here, yeah. that was a takedown. Two points in wrestling. Ten yards in football. First and 20 now. But that's very doable for this Brigham Young offense. Doman flushed, throwing deep. Man up and caught. Wow. Storm Halliday. This guy is on the Heisman ballot right now. There are a lot of great players in this country. It was Gabriel Poo Reed. With the catch. His first reception of the night. And with 13 and a half minutes left in the ball game, Brigham Young has scored again. You won't find a better play by a quarterback than that. Steve Young taught him well this summer. Brigham Young 49, Colorado State 34 out of American Samoa his first touchdown catch he comes off the bench he's the 21st different receiver to catch a pass for Brigham Young this year 12th to have a touchdown catch I don't know what's the most impressive I think it's 12 having a touchdown catch it is America Samoa now here's a look that you can see the ball scored out at the end but it looks like he had it long enough Well, all I know is that's the same end zone and that's the same corner of that end zone. We've had a lot of action tonight. Now Colorado State. Henri Childs getting close to 200 yards to the 39 yard line. Colorado State's defense couldn't stop Brigham Young in the first quarter. Couldn't stop Brigham Young in the third quarter. Well, and all you can do is go match them. I mean, at this point in the game, when you fall behind by two touchdowns, and really two touchdowns, assuming you have a two-point conversion on one, you have to go match them. Childs again, short of the first down to the 44. And I think what you'll see is that BYU will be content to go ahead and sit back in that zone and keep everything in front of them. And if they need to give up three yards here, five yards there, just like we have now, third and two, so be it. And let Colorado State eat up the clock. And that plays right into their hands. If they can get seven out of it, and if they take up five minutes, that's fine from BYU's perspective. Colorado State two touchdowns away. Van Pelt's pitch. Childs is going over 200 yards, and he may be going all the way. He's caught from behind and pulled down at the 28-yard line by Levi Madriano. Well, and that's the beautiful thing about the option. Throw away everything I just said, because what I was talking about was your power game or play action or those types of things. On the option football, you're accountable for a man. And if you don't cover your man, it can be six points. The offense executed better than the defense there. Reverse to Dallas Davis. And he's in trouble. And he's caught. Janard Guilford flags down. Dallas Davis on the reverse. I think Dallas Davis was holding his face mask as if that might be the call. That's a 15 yarder. That's an intentional. Well, Van Pelt was out there blocking as well. Yeah, he missed his man this time. <laughs> Personal foul, face mask, defense, 15 yards, first down. Well, it's a shame for BYU defensively because they had this play snuffed out. 
Van Pelt doesn't really get his man. Dallas Davis fortunate there. But Guilford guilty. And we'll see if it's intentional. Yeah. I, that's a borderline. It is a penalty. Whether it's 5 or 15 is the question. I think you can always tell by looking at the coaching staffs. And on that one, it was on the BYU side, and there was a little yakety yak, but it wasn't the, you know, just adamant. You're right. That's a good point. I don't think Ken ever changes right there. He wears that gum out. Ken Schmidt, defensive coordinator. In his 20th season. Interesting thing they did here. Gary Croak came in and brought a lot of his guys. Offensively, they go get it with his guys. He inherited and kept, you know, the Ken Schmidt in his 20 year. Uh, Stay and one of his coaches on first and ten. Childs falls to the 11. Justin Anna hit him first. We've talked a lot about Bradley Van Pelt. Henri Childs did not start this football game, but the junior out of Shawnee Mission, Kansas, is now over. 200 yards. The first Colorado State rusher since Kevin McDougal to do it. Well, he's kept Dwayne Ruck on the bench, and what he's done now, what he didn't do earlier in the year, is he's learned the right paths in those zone blocking schemes. He's playing much better. McDougal went for 255 against New Mexico. Van Pelt scrambling, and he's going to keep it where he had a man in the back of the end zone. It's a hard-earned gain of about four. Rich, I haven't seen anyone that is a rusher, a defensive end, defensive lineman, or a blitzer, whether it's a safety or a linebacker, get him in the backfield. And most of them haven't even come close. He, he avoids that first defender as if he's not there. Third and five. They've been running option in this situation. And here he again. comes again. The pitch to Childs. Oh, he stepped by one man. Then he stopped, and he stopped short of the first down. Well, in this situation, I think you have to go. Dustin Staley made the stop. That's Luke's brother, the older brother. Three points gives you nothing, Rich. You get to 37, you're down 12. There's, a, there's a look at Dustin. Colorado State, I, I think the game is on the line here. I think they don't make this. Van Pelt's going to call a timeout. It would be tough to win. 10.43 left in this football game. Sonny Lubick will talk it over with his quarterback. We'll take a timeout as well. Back to Provo after this. On fourth and two from the BYU five. Colorado State must get just outside the three-yard line. Well, a couple of thoughts. I think you have to run option because they haven't stopped it all night. I got the sense, though, coming out that there was some type of pass in the woods. If they do, it's a real risk. Option. Van Pelt pitches. Charles dropped the ball. BYU's got it, and it recovers. This is obvious. Not much to say. They go with what we thought they would go with. Executed well. Oh, 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 he could have walked in. The pitch was not in the perfect place, but it was something that you catch 98% of the time. Doman gives to Staley, who breaks loose, and Luke Staley running out to the 30 yard line. Staley picks up 22. And this is when a defense becomes demoralized. You know, your offense drives it down. You think they're going to finish it off. They have it. You know, you can see the play developing. You're going to get in the end zone, and now you're back in the game. It doesn't happen, and it is a really tough situation defensively because you're just demoralized.
We talked about Henri Childs. Luke Staley's number is starting to impress as well. Over a thousand for this season. Staley. Seven more yards. Staley on the carry. Remind you of anybody? Oh, he has the, you know, he has deceptive speed. Uh, I think he has a unique style because he has the power, he has the speed, and again, I think he has those feet, and we have... Who's that that's down? Brian Save is down for Colorado State. Um, you know, I never saw Gail Sayers in person. I've seen tons of, of uh, video of him, and certainly he does a lot of things that Luke Staley could never do. But it seemed like Gail Sayers kind of had his his hand out at Luke Staley always to be on seems to be on behind his blockers with that lean with good speed. I can't think of anybody else to compare him to and and again don't get me wrong that I'm comparing him to how the great Gale Sayers but some of the things he does reminds me of Sayers. Save who had the touchdown return on the fumble. He is back on his feet. Well Staley's only a junior. You know, the first time Lee Corso saw him run, Lee was doing a, a Thursday night game with Brigham Young. He runs around the side, and Corso goes, that kid's going to play in the pros. And apparently... <laughs> There's Corso! There he is. Big Lee, he made it! And I guess everybody looked at him and said, you're nuts. Well, it's his first carry. <laughs> and they continued to say that about him, and he be he's become a rich man and a famous man. Yeah, but you know what? I think he well, was he's right. right about yeah, Luke sure he was. And I don't know how quickly, what he saw so quickly to make him think that, but um, good football eyes, I guess, would see that and realize it. But he is really good. 9.52 left in this football game. Gary Curtin, who grew up in the shadows of Brigham Young, played at Colorado State, was an assistant coach here under Lavelle Edwards, worked here while Mike Holmgren was here as a quarterback coach, and then found his way to a variety of different places, Boston College, Georgia Tech, three years as a head coach at Louisiana Tech, Two years offensive coordinator with the Chicago Bears. I think he's been 11, had 11 jobs in 20 years. And I'm not kidding. Doman on the option, and he's got the first down for Brigham Young. Brandon Doman with a game of four. You know, I've told you several times that uh, I had known about Gary Croton before he came over here, and I'm more impressed now than, than ever before. And you've got to be impressed with. With, he and his wife have a wonderful relationship and uh, great parents, and they have another child on the way. He already has, they already have six children. So, in doing homework for this game, there are lots of people around here who have six or seven kids. Total yards. Colorado State on the ground. BYU has run for 345 yards. <laughs> Reverse. It's Mahe. And he's going to try the other side. Reno Mahe. Mahe to the 50. He's down to the 26. <laughs> well, this play was set up, and he could have gained about 35 easily. Perfectly executed reverse, no white shirt in the area, and Doman says, well, I guess if I have to block him, I will. Reverses his field. Great vision, though. He has to be tired by then. How many yards? 80? 90? Yes. Should have. You know, certainly he ran he, that He far. executed his own double reverse. <laughs> Staley again. It ends up being a triple reverse, Staley right? 22, you're right. Sanex Championships will come up immediately following this one here on ESPN 2. Mountain West tonight, Brigham Young on top of Colorado State, 49 to 34. BYU trying to prove to the country that they're as good as their number eight ranking, that they're better than their number 13 BCS ranking. Hard to do in a season in which they didn't schedule, at least 
You know what though? I mean schedules are made now three four years out in advance. Yeah. And who yeah. was. Yeah. I mean Mississippi State was expected to be very good. Cal was supposed to be OK. Throwing the end zone is incomplete. Third bad pass of the night to my recollection. Yeah. You know you look at Cal you think what this year. I mean you know maybe when you schedule them they're sure. even better. But you look this year I, mean, I think 500. Tulane think. Tulane down this year and there's not much Brigham Young could do about it next year. They've got Syracuse coming in here and they go to Georgia Tech and they're in all fairness to Brigham Young traditionally they have one of the better non conference schedules around. They usually have two games against some pretty big names. Well and they started too low. I mean I, I think that they've struggled the last couple of years and this is a club now that next season if they finish the way we think they will uh, you know they'll be a top team coming in next year. Doman, even though they lose the quarterback. Escapes once, escapes twice. Doman looking, throwing from his back, and it was a bad throw. It was intercepted. Picked off by Aaron Sprague. Well, it's easy to become bulletproof or feel that you're bulletproof when you play as well as Doman, but that was a dumb mistake, and only his third interception, Rich. Yep, well, two coming into this one. Great escapability. But here's where you have to throw it away. I think he I think he's trying to throw it as far as he can, and he slips, and he had a man deep in the end zone. Colorado State has seven and a half minutes left. They're down by two touchdowns. And they don't have an offense that's designed to get points in a hurry. Child's out of bounds after a gain of maybe two. Now tell me this, Rich, and I'm sure the coaches on the sideline are thinking this. How does he drop a pitch that was going to be a walk in and snag that one? You see that little snag? Yeah. Like Lance Allward, Bambi out the backfield. Child's dropped an option pitch on fourth and two at his own at the BYU five, and he had a clear lane to the end zone. On the last drive, Childs again. And I don't think Colorado State has enough time to do this. Well, earlier in the game, they were able to bust those simple plays for 15, 20 yards and go down the field quickly, but BYU is doing a better job here. Henri Childs has done a wonderful job tonight. His numbers, 230 now on the ground. Ben Pelt has run for 175. But both of them would like to have that last option play back. On third down. Van Pelt completes it. Kapari all the way down to the 45 yard line. It's a 31 yard catch. Kapari's second catch. The junior out of Westlake Village, California. And Colorado State certainly can use that. Can you imagine how good Van Pelt would be if he were to continue to improve during the football? He's only a sophomore, and they say he's made such great strides this year in just the eight games that he's played. Van Pelt with time. Ball deflected and incomplete. Second and ten. And remember, he hasn't started all these games either. Right. D.J. Bush was the starter. Right. Early in the season. You know, I like what BYU did here defensively. They didn't over pursue. I think Van Pelt is thinking, "Come get me, come get me." He's trying to find a guy soft zone back there. Can't find anyone. Finally does. And now we have Brian Denny becoming a factor. Six seven gets the arms up and he gets the knockdown. Sanex Championships coming up next. Kim Kleister's at number five. Arancha Sanchez Vicario. That's the current match. Second down at ten. Van Pelt. That one deflected and intercepted. And BYU is forced to turn over. And it's Ryan Denny. He deflected the first one. He collects the second one. Ryan Denny has come to life. 
Watch 92. This was batted up and 92 coming from your right side of the screen. Good reaction. Very good reaction. Great hands. He was catching punch yesterday. Brett Kiesel deflected it last week. Then he showed off his speed. This was a key play. San Diego State on a long drive. Watch it, this. Denny scoops it up. Look at it. He's like, Look at that. He's like Forrest Gump. <laughs> I think he's a foot taller there, than Tom <laughs> Hanks. There's Staley. Again, guys, that's 6'7, 275. Staley on the carry. He didn't, I mean, he looked like a guy running the 200 meters. Now, the reason I like this guy is he did what I did. At five years of age, he was playing the violin. Except he played it for a while. No way. Yeah. I'm, I'm calling do, you do on some, that hey, one. Hey, do some more homework, guys. You played the violin? Oh, I thought you meant you didn't know he did. No, no, yes. no. I'm, you, you I'm calling you on it. No, no, I did. You're losing all his bets tonight. Absolutely, I did. I was second chair. Linda Mercer was first chair. After three years of it, I gave it up. <laughs> Couldn't jump up to first chair. <laughs> Help me, Mr. Wizard. <laughs> Fall at the 43 of Colorado State. on the ground BYU with Ned Stearns and the clock continues to run in the BCS you've got conference champions that get automatic bids but the Mountain West does not and there's been some people have even speculated why not add a fifth BCS game for the conference champion of say the Mountain West or Conference USA why don't those conferences get their champions to go? How come the other conferences get to go? Yeah, I'd say a lot of it's money. That's and thank you. You know the, the quality of the team or teams that come out. I, I think that the rest of the teams in this conference need to play better out of conference. There's Doman. There's a flag down back at the 40. Doman is still wandering around to the 20 down to the 18 yard line, 36 yards. But this one's coming back. It's one of the things that college football doesn't have that college basketball does have in the yeah. NCAA tournament, the Cinderella. There's no Gonzagas in college football. You don't get to see BYU take on uh, a Michigan yeah. or, or, or yeah. a, a Stanford. And had they been able to beat somebody early this year that was a quality team, like Fresno State did, they did it three times. Here's the rest of their schedule. Well, the problem is I miss circle there. You got you have Wyoming with two wins. Now Utah is good for you, but now here's a surprise. We mentioned it. They schedule a good team, Hawaii, and they only end up with one win. Hawaii is okay, but as you add that up, that's two games below 500. That's what the remaining opponents' records are. And so you're 110th right now out of 117. I think there's a case you could build that they would end up somewhere around a hundredth strength of schedule. That's not good. In fact, that's bad. Dolman fakes the reverse to Mahe. Throws it to a wide open man that stones. Who makes the catch. Holds on to the 23-yard line. Ned Stearns. Justin Gallimore to hit 30 yards on the pickup. And so to finish the thought. BYU's only hope would be that teams above them lose and you're able to move up to, to third in the rankings. And it's a great play, by the way. This isn't an easy throw. Not, not an easy catch to hold on. Gallimore came in and hit him. And just to finish the thought, I think June Jones just threw something at the TV. Yeah? Yeah, I think Hawaii's better than OK. Five and two. If well, it, if be, I said that, I'd take that back. Uh, Maybe on the mainland they're okay. Yeah, no, I but at, in Hawaii they're no, 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 no. If I said that, I'm wrong. Like, four hours, you know, you're gonna make 15 points. Yeah, don't worry, man. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Dolman hit hard on that one. Ryan Sabe. You know, even though BYU played poorly defensively, much of the well, they played poorly. 34 points. You know, Colorado State, what's that, 14 over their average? Mm -hmm. So defense didn't play well. But they are so good offensively. I think that 
voters around the country will look at this and they'll say, I think that team could hang in there with most people. So I don't think they'll be voted down. If anything, I think they'll be voted up. Well, Dolan told us himself that last weekend they were watching the TV and they were seeing teams, the unbeatens, yeah. pick up a loss here or there, and they were sort of counting the spots. On the pitch, Mahe. Oh! To the nine-yard line. Well, there was a lot of talk around here locally, and I think it's unfounded that last year Colorado State was up 45 to nothing and they left their starters in late in the ball game and ran it up well right now these are starters in the ball game but the reason I don't understand that is that they didn't score in the second half to my recollection and you know what BYU had to go with a third string quarterback at the end of that game. <laughs> and his name is Brandon Dolman. Yeah. And since that quarter, Dolman hasn't lost. I mean, he came in in relief in that game in the fourth quarter. Yeah. It ended up 45 21 Colorado State. And Dolman has won 10 in a row. This will make it 11 sure. in a row. Sure. So if that did happen, you want to say thank you <laughs> to Colorado State. Colorado State, on the other hand, is going to have to be in out to be full eligible. They'll drop to four and five. Are you kidding me? 843 yards combined or rushing. And that will go up to 846 because Luke Staley is going to score a touchdown here. And Staley will walk in with his fifth touchdown. Record that he set tonight. You know, they had him out of the ball game for a while. And when they got it down closer to the goal, I think they wanted that extra touchdown. Coaches pay attention. Up in the booth, sometimes they'll shuttle it down or through other means and let coaches know when players are near records. The point is good. Total over 50 points a game. Well, I think more impressively tonight, their punter has not been a busy guy. He's yet to go on the field. They've had zero punts. We lost it on down one time and they had an interception, but zero punts. 11 possessions, 8 downs, Ooh. and they haven't stopped hitting. Kobe Bachwaltz made the hit. 56-34 BYU. 2-11 left in this one, 56-34. Brigham Young on top of Colorado State. And immediately following this one, the Sanex Championships. Coming right up, Kim Kleisters, Rancho Sanchez Vicario. <clears throat> Brad Van Pelt from Colorado State. Throws over the middle and completes it to Pete Redstock. Out to the 24 yard line, close to the first down. We really. You know, this game has gotten to the point where we've we've left Van Pelt, but what a tremendous story he's been tonight. A, a gutsy effort, 175 yards on the ground. He had some daring runs. He ran over a middle linebacker for a touchdown. Well, he's thrown for 115 as well, so he has some numbers. He'll add to that as he hits Redstock. Was knocked out of bounds. What a catch there, though. What a snag by Rebstock. In the Mountain West Conference, Brigham Young is on top. And remember, this game was for first place. Colorado State with a loss is going to go to four and five overall, three and two in the conference. And Brigham Young will stretch their lead to five and zero oh in the conference, nine and zero oh overall. And depending on what happens on Saturday, possibly move up a tick or two in the polls. Yeah. A couple of games remaining. Van Pelt. And Bradley Van Pelt is out to the 47. What you need is you need Colorado State, or rather, as we look at Colorado State's remaining schedule, we've got a Thursday night game on ESPN and at New Mexico. You need to take Brigham Young 
and Fresno State and merge the two schools so you could get Fresno State's quality non-conference wins. <laughs> we'll beat Colorado, Wisconsin, and Oregon State. And Colorado State for that matter. And BYU still got that perfect record, 634 lead. Look at these, but I mean, these are smart fans. Most places at sports centers <laughs> coming up. These guys know the San X championships are coming up. Who all is playing in there? They have uh, Ken Kleister, yeah. Rancho Sanchez, Victoria. That's going on right now. Yeah. Couldn't tell who that player down in the corner that sign was. I think it was Ken Kleister. I couldn't see a number. Second and one. Van Pelt going deep for Davis. Oh, he dropped it. There's a lot of completions like that, though, and you know when you get one on one and throw it up that way, that's the name of the game these days. When you underthrow, your man knows it, defender does it. See a lot of completions that way. How might this game be different had Henri Childs held that pitch, the option play on fourth and two, with the BYU four? Childs dropped it. Colorado State was down two touchdowns. The pitch was a bit behind him. Yeah, but not enough. You're right. It was a good enough pitch to go in. Lots of what ifs for Colorado State. And I'm sure BYU has a couple of them as well. I, I think the, the most critical, critical play that you look back at was the, the one in the end zone that uh, at the end of the half that what was a red stock came down with. Right. There was a rule that incompletion. It looked like a touchdown. Tonight, 184 yards on the ground. He was over 100 yards in the Fresno State game. And had a few breaks gone his and Colorado State's way. He's looking at 200 on the ground. What do you think? 184 right now. He's thinking about getting the end zone. Yeah, you're right. That one's incomplete. Becoming a pocket passer, maybe not necessarily a pocket passer, but a competent passer. That's the challenge for Van Pelt and the Colorado State staff. Because what they have, they got the Sanex Championships coming up. What they have is an incredibly athletic and gutsy quarterback. Yeah. Well, they've got to get him to the point where they can allow him to check into place. You know, this is one of the only schools I've ever seen that their offense, they don't check from run to pass. You know, quarterbacks don't go to the line and, and have the ability to check from the run to a pass. And Red stock inside the 20. It'll stop the clock with a minute left. But I think with him having so many games in front of him that he'll he's going to develop into that type of passer and see what he can do running the football. But with a guy like that, Rich, it's all about decisions. He makes so many more good decisions now than he did the first game that he played. After that first game he played, the coaches were saying, man, we, we just can't let him do hardly anything because most of the things he did would beat you. Van Pelt's throw, that's a flag, and you'll get pass interference at the three-yard line. Joey Capari was the intended receiver. Gary Croton says, come on, come on, let's go. I got six kids waiting at home. <laughs> and a seventh on the way. Yeah, he has six and two-thirds, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's racked up some offensive numbers. Louisiana Tech, they won a lot of games. What were they, nine and two, I think, one year with him? Mm -hmm. Pass interference, defense, 15-yard penalty. Tim Rattay was their quarterback. Luke Stanley, the running back for Brigham Young, 196 yards. The offensive numbers in, in this game are just incredible. Henry Childs almost at 250. Stanley at up near 200. Van Pelt at 185. Dolman. Oh, it's been a great game. I mean, if, if you're a defensive fan, defensive coach, or a follower, you may not have wanted to watch this one very long, but most people like to see points and excitement, and this game really had it. This has been fun. Okay, points, excitement, the Santa, 165 on the ground. 
and 284 in the air. He knew that. I didn't know he'd rack up that many yards on the ground. And the Sanex Championships are coming up. And down goes Van Pelt at the 14-yard line. Brady Popinga on the sack. Tie. Van Pelt. Blitz coming. Pass complete. And out of bounds is the tight end, Jose Ochoa. Cougars like to bring a bunch of people down inside their 20-yard line, and that's what they've done. They got a sack, and they got a pressure there. to have that tight end game the way BYU does. They, tie, they line those, uh, they get those tight ends as a safety valve or a little vertical route. They are dangerous weapons. Third down, another blitz. Van Pell, end zone, picked off. Kurt Elliott. Sophomore from Gig Harbor, Washington. Fourth turnover for Colorado State. Well, the BCS talk is everywhere, and it's been here with a chant of BCS, BCS. Washington State has got a tough one this week. UCLA. Yeah. You're right, and you just kind of, if you're a BYU fan, you hope that Washington's got Stanford at home. Yeah. So those two teams could uh, take a loss. And, of course, a loss hurts you in that standing. It's part of the formula. For those of you that want even more BYU and Colorado <laughs> State, we'll be on ESPN News with more post-game coverage. We'll talk BCS. We'll talk Brandon Doman. We'll talk Gary Croton and Luke Staley. and Brigham Young, number eight in the country, trying to climb the BCS ladder. Tonight they make a statement against Sonny Lubick and the Colorado State Rams. They beat them by a score of 56 to 34. There's your final. Brigham Young is now 9-0. Up next, the WTA Sanex Championships. Join us over on ESPN News, won't you? This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Dean Blevins, Heather Cox, our entire crew, I'm Rich Waltz. For more, log on to ESPN.